Almost a century earlier, on the opposite side of the Pacific, another catastrophic eruption had taken place on the tiny island of Krakatau, in the straits between Java to the east and Sumatra to the west. And in 1883, it was an island five miles long and three miles wide, with three volcanic peaks on it, the highest of which rose to almost 3,000 feet. But those peaks were dormant. There had been no sign of any volcanic activity on Krakatau within living memory. But then, in August of that year, people on the coast of Java began to hear a series of explosions. A great column of smoke rose above Krakatau. Pieces of lava the size of a house were being thrown high into the air. The explosions continued day after day. The column of smoke rose up until it was five miles or so up into the sky. Ships that were sailing nearby had their decks covered in ash and in pumice, and at night, electric flames played over the rigging. Day after day, this continued. And as it was doing so, it was emptying the lava chamber deep in the Earth's crust beneath the sea. And that was the cause of the greatest catastrophe of all. Because on the morning of August the 27th, Monday, at 10 o'clock, the roof of that lava chamber collapsed. Millions of tons of seawater poured onto the red hot lava. So did millions of tons of rocks. And this produced a titanic explosion. The noise was almost certainly the loudest noise that has ever echoed around the Earth in recorded history. It was heard 2,000 miles away in Australia. 3,000 miles away, on the small island of Rodriguez in the South Atlantic, the commander of the garrison heard it and thought it was the sound of distant gunfire at sea. The explosion also produced a tempest of wind, which swept out entirely around the globe seven and a half times before it finally died away. But most catastrophic of all, the explosion produced a tidal wave. It swept towards the coasts, and as it approached, it became a wall of water over 100 feet high. It crashed into the harbours of the little villages. It picked up a naval gunboat with a crew of 28 and lifted it bodily for over a mile inland and dumped it on the top of a hill. And it overwhelmed village after village. Over 36,000 people were killed. The pall of ash brought darkness over an area of 100 miles or so for several days. But when it cleared away, they found that the island of Krakatau was unrecognizable. Three quarters of the main island had disappeared. The two nearby islets were buried beneath massive deposits of ash. And where the tallest peak had stood, the sea was 900 feet deep, but not for long. 44 years later, another island rose from the boiling sea. They called it Anak Krakatau, the child of Krakatau. Compared with the explosions of its parent, its eruptions are still trivial bubblings. After more than 50 years of fitful activity, Krakatau's child has built itself a new cone. It's still not very big, less than a thousand feet high. Sporadically, it explodes, but often it's easy enough to walk round its rim. The fumes that boil up from its crater are partly steam and partly sulfurous gas. Now the sulphur condenses on the rocks, coating them yellow. All volcanic eruptions spew out sulphur in one form or another, including those underwater. 